Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today, I would like to start telling you about modular representation theory. So modular representation theory really just means basically mod P. So you're not working over C anymore, over the complex numbers or some nice field of characteristic zero, but rather over, let's say over some finite field or an algebraic closure of a finite field. Um, and you try to do the same, but it's really, really much more complicated. And in the next few videos, including this one, obviously, I'm trying to explain why is this more so more complicated and what you can do to overcome at least some of the obstacles. It still is super hard. So modular representation theory is still one of the hardest uh, fields of mathematics altogether. It's, it's really hard. You can say surprisingly almost nothing, which is kind of surprisingly because, well, representation theory of the complex numbers was really nice, actually. It was really smooth. I uh, hope you liked it, like character theory. It's, it's really great and so applicable. And you just do the same over a finite field or not a bike closure over a finite field. And it's basically dead. And it's kind of weird. OK, so let's have a look why it is basically dead. Um, and then maybe in a few different videos, the next video, for example, I'm going to explain you what you can do. So it might not be completely dead, but from the first glance, it certainly is. And it gets so much more complicated. So we will see. So um, I basically have one example that I would like to use today. And it's this example of Z mod 3 acting on the Finnish street sign here by, well, it says obviously a threefold symmetry, and you just act by, well, <laughs> rotating. Um, for example, the G matrix, I uh, will also have an H matrix in a second. So the H matrix, I can already write it down. So the G matrix is just uh, the matrix of rotation by, what is it, 120 degrees, maybe, um, in the sense of that I have those basis vectors and I rotate them. Uh, but anyway, so here is the H matrix. And there's also the identity matrix, of course. So H would correspond to rotation by 240 degrees. And all of these are, of course, of order three, because, well, basically, because three times 120 is, if I'm not miscalculating, is 330. Anyway, so the way to analyze this representation um, over the complex numbers is really simple and extremely powerful. It kind of does all a billion groups at once. It's, I, of course, I'm staying here with the example of Zimba 3, but basically all of them can be done in a similar way. So you just take your matrix. Um, you only need to take one of them because they all commute, so they are simultaneously diagonalizable, and you just bring it in Jordan form. And the Jordan form is really, really simple in this case. It just has the roots of unities uh, along the diagonal. So my theta here is just a, a choice of the third root of unity, a primitive third root of unity. So um, the Jordan decomposition, in other words, really, it's really just the Jordan decomposition of the complex numbers shows that the regular representation of the mod three, which is exactly this one, that's all, the only thing I've done here, and um, the regular rep representation decomposes really, really nicely and could get really read off the simple representations here. They're just given by specifying uh, different roots of unities. Um, okay, so that's great. So our billing groups, uh, in this case, just Z mod three, but in many groups in general, have really a satisfying representation theory, and we can push that further. And I hoped I was able to convince you in the previous, God knows so many videos, um, that it's actually pretty powerful as long as you stay over the complex numbers. So you would guess maybe uh, if you're naive like me, you might guess okay, or if we change fields, uh, go to a field of characteristic uh, P, it's probably not much different. I mean, you still have a Jordan decomposition. And Sage can actually run it. So Sage code is in the description in case you would like to run it online. Um, but it's so much harder. So that's what I did. I just did exactly the same. I used my matrix here. This is just uh, the matrix from before, just in Sage code. Well, you can check that. So it's the only thing is written here is that the first row is this one, the second row is this one, and the third row is, I guess, this one, which was exactly our G matrix from before. And I do the same all those things A and B, but I work over characteristic zero. Uh, strictly speaking, I work over, so cyclotomic field three would be exactly this one for uh, adjoining my third root of unity. I already know that I need it, so I, I just adjoin it, and I get my decomposition for before. It's exactly the same one as here, just Sage confirms that I haven't messed up. Um, as I said, you can run this live if you want, uh, link is in the description. And if you change fields, so in this case, I change my field to Galois field three, which is F3. So 
uh, Zemo 3, whatever. And Sage sometimes secretly just goes to the right closure anyway. But in this case, it simply doesn't help. So the drawdown decomposition in this case looks very different, right? So it's, it's not a diagonal matrix. It's an honest Jordan block. The whole matrix is an honest Jordan block. So um, here again, written in the same uh, way, I basically just uh, in plain LaTeX instead of in Sage. So the Jordan decomposition that you can still run over F3 just gives you a very, very different result. So it, it shows that the um, uh, representation is actually indecomposable. You can't decompose it further. It's one drawdown rule. Uh, but it's also not simple. You can basically see the filtration patterns. I'm going to explain that in a second again. So this is very different, right? So now it's not so easy to just say, oh, on the diagonal, I have my simple modules, and I read them off. Well, on the diagonal, I still have my simple modules. But first of all, they are all the same now, because I have just one. And second, you can't just split them off. They, they kind of have all these error terms up here. So a very strange situation from the viewpoint of the complex numbers. Just a very, very different role on the composition that we are facing here. And this is really a problem. And this turns out to be the, the underlying problem in, in characteristic if you want to do modular representation theory. It always comes up in various disguises. But what you see here, for example, is if you take the naive eigenvector, which is just the sum of everything, the sum of everything is always fixed in a group. The, the group just permutes the symbols, basically. So the sum of everything is always fixed. Uh, very easy calculation for my three, three matrices, so identity matrix. This was matrix G. This was matrix H. Uh, we could easily check that everything fixes my vector here. So this is an eigenvector, and this is an eigenvector independent of the field. Works over the rationals, works over F3, works over complex numbers or whatever. Um, so this shows that this is an eigenvector. So this is a submodule. So in other words, it's not simple over F3, right? But it's indecomposable because the Jordan block is indecomposable. So we just found a representation that is not simple, but indecomposable. In other words, the representation theory is not semi-simple. Right? I say it again, the represent and that's a huge problem. The representation theory is not semi-simple because we have a Jordan block which has submodules, an honest Jordan block which has submodules. That never happens uh, over the complex numbers. It's just it's just a miracle of complex numbers that it never happens. But here it just does, and there's nothing we can do. We just get this Jordan block from Jordan decomposition, um, this indecomposable one. Uh, well, why, why don't I just go back this one here? And there's still the eigenvector. So it's simple. It's not simple, but inecomposable. And that's a huge problem. It's kind of the problem, the underlying problem in a finite characteristic. So really things get a bit nasty. And we'll try to we really try to, we really need to work very hard to overcome at least part of it. So um, it's semi simple if and only if. P doesn't divide the order of G, where P is the characteristic of your field. Okay, so um, in my example F3 and Z mod 3, Z mod 3 is certainly uh, order 3, and well, P is 3, so it's kind of the, the one case that is really difficult. Um, and the character theory just falls apart in this case. So classically, if you want, uh, the, the main point of character theory was that using the characters, the traces of the matrices was completely enough. And if the characters are the same, then the representations are the same. And that's just wrong in characteristic P. It's just not true. And that's a huge problem because it forces you, instead of working with characters, which are just numerical functions, basically they're just numerics, just some, some nice combinatorics and uh, number theory, if you want. You really need then need to work with the modules, and that's hard, and that's just hard. We don't want to do it, but we need to. There's no way around. It's actually even worse. The whole notion of a character is wrong in, in if this actually happens, and there's a correct replacement, which I'm not going to address in this video. And it, it's really creepy. Basically, everything that can go wrong just goes wrong. It's really, really hard. It's kind of a fun thing. Um, note that here the condition is P doesn't divide G, and it actually works. So here, let's have a look. I did exactly the same as before. I just changed my fields. So this is F4, uh, the field with four elements, and this is uh, F7, the field with seven elements. And you can see that the drawing decomposition is actually uh, pretty nice again over those fields. And of course, characteristic two doesn't divide three 
the order of the group and seven also doesn't divide the order of the group three but it looks really good so here actually kind of fun fact here um so the reason i'm taking f4 and not f2 is that i need the roots of unities to exist so that's why i need to go to the algebraic closure in general so in f2 so we had this equation here x squared plus x plus one equals zero and just in f2 this doesn't have any solution f7 uh, on the other hand is good so in f7 this has solutions for example uh for example two two squared plus two uh this is a plus one here plus one is i guess seven which in characteristic seven is zero so two is actually a third root of unity in characteristic zero and so is four and what you see here in the dual and decomposition are really just the usual roots of unities here. And here you just need to get to a bigger field. Anyway, all I'm saying is in some fields, you, you need roots of unities to make it work. So you potentially need to make your field bigger. Anyway, so in characters for uh, over characteristic three are just really, really bad. For example, the character of three times the trivial representation is zero because you take everything times three, um, and so is the character as a regular representation, but they're not equivalent, right? So it's a character theory really, really just falls apart over uh, the wrong characteristic. And you really need to work a lot to make this work. And kind of the problem is the following. This was Mushka's original argument. So uh, Mushka's argument was a bit smaller than what I did. So instead of taking the sum of all elements and you have a fixed vector, you want to find the projection corresponding to that vector. And it works as follows. So instead of taking the sum of all vectors, you take the sum of all matrices, right? So my extra matrix here is identity, and this is G, and this is H. You just take the sum of them. It's called the total matrix. And the total matrix, in this case, is very boring. It's just one, 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 and a lot of ones. Um, and the total matrix has always very nice eigenvalues. And namely, one of them will be the biggest one will be the order of the group. So yeah, just three, of course, the order of Z mod three. So the idempotent, well, you have a matrix and you have a huge eigenvalue and all the other eigenvalues are zero. So it's an idempotent matrix if you divide by the eigenvalue. Uh, so more formally, if you don't want to work in terms of matrices, you can take the sum of the group elements, but you can also work on the group elements here. And because the leading eigenvalue is the order of G of so three, you divide by it, you get an idempotent and that idempotent splits your simple representation uh, your trivial representation from the regular representation. Um, but you can't do that trick if, uh, well, the eigenvalue of three is actually divisible by P because then it's zero. And this element is just nilpotent, so you can't play the trick anymore. And that's kind of the proof of Muschke theorem, if you want. So what Muschke did is argued that the total matrix here that you can always define has an eigenvalue that is given by the order of the group. Okay, so if it's the P doesn't divide the order of the group. I just divide by the eigenvalue. I get an idempotent uh, um, that splits off the trivial representation by construction, basically. Uh, so you're done because now you're basically have showed that the trivial representation splits and then you kind of can go on inductively. And otherwise you just can't do it. And it's kind of implies you need to work a bit harder that the converse is, is also true. So if P divides G, then it's not so much simple. Basically, you just found a little potent element here namely the total matrix. Anyway, all I wanted to say in this video is actually that we need to be very careful in modular representation theory, which is kind of surprising. If you see this for the first time, in the end, it looks very similar. You just change fields, but it, different fields are very different than uh, the complex numbers. The point is you can always divide by all integers all the time in, in characteristic zero for the complex numbers. If you find integer number eight, whatever, or 10 or 12 or whatever, you can always divide by it. And you always need to do that to get the correct eigenvalues. You kind of do want to normalize your eigenvalues, but you simply can't do that in the wrong characteristic. So if your eigenvalue is 13 and you're in characteristic 13, there's no way you can divide by it because it's just zero. And that's, that's exactly the problem why modular representation theory gets so complicated. You want to divide by numbers, but you can't because they're zero. And that's why my subtitle was division made hard. Kind of that's the whole point why modular representation theory is so hard and well we could still do something and i'm going to explain that in the next video for example um anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and i also hope to see you next time